In this episode of Woodlands on the Web, we're actually going to look at some shortcuts for using Google Sheets to manipulate large data sets that you get from Kinetics experiments. So the scenario for this lab is you're going to be reacting crystal violet, which is a purple dye, with sodium hydroxide, and over time it will eventually fade to clear. Um, if we were able to do this as a real experiment um, in a face-to-face -face class, then what you would be doing is using a spectrophotometer or a color emitter to collect data on the absorbance of certain or on the absorbance of a certain wavelength of light over time so that you can see how the absorbance and therefore the concentration changes over time and then we'll look at those data sets in order to determine the order of the reaction and to determine the rate law for the reaction so i've shared some representative data with you that will allow you to at least do the analysis portion of this lab if you're not able to collect your own data. So to begin with, again, we were using a colorimeter, and so we have our reaction in the um, cuvette, and we are collecting the absorbance every, in this case, 30 seconds over the course of several minutes. And so the first thing that we want to do is translate the absorbance into a concentration of crystal violet. So considering the fact that anytime we do colorimeter or spectrophotometry experiments, we're almost always creating a calibration curve so that we can compare any unknown absorbance to a certain concentration of the substance that we're detecting. So in this case, that part would have been done ahead of time, and we can use the, the number from that slope of the calibration curve in order to convert the absorbance to the concentration. So we're going to do that first. So before I start adding in numbers and showing you a couple tricks, uh, I'd like you to take the, the shared data that I, I gave you and add in these three headings. So this is the concentration of crystal violet in column C, the natural log of the concentration of crystal violet in column D, and the inverse concentration of crystal violet in column E. Okay, based on the line of best fit, um, I have a slope uh, for the group that this data came from, and their slope was around 0 0.03. So that's going to be the relationship between our absorbance and our crystal violet con concentration. So that being said, I'm going to start out by creating a command. Rather than trying to figure out this or use the slope every time, I'm going to simply say that the this, the cell here is going to be equal to the absorbance divided by the slope that they got for their line of best fit. Okay, so that's going to automatically do the math for me, but the reason I want to do that is because now if I hover over the blue box and click and drag down, you'll notice that it does this for every subsequent, subsequent entry. So for example, this last point is the number here 0 0.105 divided by that slope. So now you can easily see that the concentration has gone down over the time of the experiment and that um, those numbers are all the concentration for you. Okay, so we're going to apply the same idea to calculating the natural log and the inverse log. So if you were doing this by hand, you would have to say the natural log of this number equals every single time. But again, since we're using a spreadsheet and we're using a larger data set, you can simply type in equals natural log of the previous cell because now we're using the concentration and hit enter and that'll give you the natural log of this cell, which is the concentration at this absorbance at this time. Okay, and if we do the same thing, we hover over the square, we click and drag down, then you'll have all of the natural log converted values. All right, finally, we're going to do the same thing for the inverse concentration. So in this case, we're going to say that this equals literally 1 over the cell that has the concentration. So that's C2, not the previous cell this time. Okay, hit enter. And so this is 1 divided by 11.899. Okay, hover, click and drag. And now you've done all of those calculations very quickly for this pretty large data set. It had almost, or about 40 points in it. Okay, 
So that's the first part of dealing with this. The next part is trying to decide which of these particular graphs is the most linear. So I'm going to show you how to find that for the crystal violet concentration graph. And then I'm going to ask you to find this or do the same thing for the natural log data and the inverse concentration data. And then based on hopefully what you get at the end, you'll be able to see how we would decide which of these is the line of best fit, which of these is the most linear set of data, and therefore what is the order of the reaction. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the data that I want to include in my chart. So I'm going to go to insert chart and I want to use um, not cells E, I actually would rather use cells C1 through C41 because I want us to look at our concentration first. Okay, so this is giving me um, my concentration versus time passed. Okay, so down here I've got the amount of seconds, and over here I have the concentration. We can see that it's a decrease, which makes sense with our information. Um, but what I'd like to do next is we're going to include a couple other settings that are going to allow us to see how linear this actually is. Okay, so I've got some instructions in OneNote for you to look at while you're um, creating your chart based on the data that you have. So I did it this way rather than doing it all real time in the video because I think that having written out instructions with screenshots is easier when you're trying to manipulate data in something like Google Sheets rather than trying to follow along the video. Um, but what I do have on here is, like I said, I do have some screenshots and then I have how you're going to customize that graph. So the most important part is going to be this customization because this is going to allow you to figure out how linear your data is. So the most important parts are really going to be including a linear trend line because you're trying to find a linear relationship. And you also want to label it with the equation and show your R square value. So R square is basically your correlation um, from your data points to the line. So the closer your R square value is to the number one, then the better linear correlation you have. Okay, so we're going to do that for three different graphs, and you're going to do the same thing for all three. So the only difference is going to be up here where you're talking about um, the information for the cells that you use. The second graph is going to be the cells for time, and then the other axis is going to be column D, so your natural log concentration values. And then the third graph is going to be your time versus your inverse concentration values. So ultimately, when you finish with this, you should have three graphs in the same spreadsheet, and that's what I'm going to ask you to turn in. Um, your first graph using the concentration values, this is the line equation right here, and this is your R square value. Okay, so remember that R square value of 0.98. If we look at our natural log function, this has an R square value of 0.999, so that's almost exactly linear. And then additionally, if we look at our inverse function, we have 0.967. So what that tells us is that the information where we have the y-axis as the natural log of our concentration versus time is the most linear graph, and therefore looking at that summary of types of graphs again, it, when the natural log gives you the most linear function, that means that this is a first order reaction. So hopefully that helps you learn some quick spreadsheet tips that allow you to deal with larger data more quickly, um, because that's actually a pretty big uh, AP level skill. And additionally, I hope that that helps you see how finding the correct axes, or the correct really Y axis, for different kinetics experiments allows you to determine the order of the reaction. So again, as a conclusion, we can say that that particular reaction is first order with respect to crystal violet. And this concludes this episode of Woodlands on the Web, Kinetics of Crystal Violet Edition. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.